Thanks for watching. I'm going to be talking about the basics of uh, playing scales. Um, this is the first of three short videos on the subject, uh, just to cover some of the basics and I'll give you a few tips about the best way to go about it. But um, scales are really the most fundamental way of practicing and improving. Um, they give you an opportunity to practice getting your intonation right, um, all the left hand flexibility needs developing so that you can move very quickly and accurately with your fingers. But not only that, it's right hand technique as well that needs to be developed so that you can complete control of the bow, <coughs> can move it smoothly, can play in any part of the bow that you want to, uh, and so on. So I just thought I would start off today with this video and just cover uh, playing scales in first position. Um, the m main thing to remember is that there's no need to play them quickly at all. In fact, I like to separate out either playing quickly or playing slowly. And playing slowly is just as important, if not more so, than being able to play quickly. So, um, my idea, uh, my tip for you, is to uh, just play in first position. That means playing G major, G minor, practice the minor scales as well. Be able to do this without the music. Uh, then you've got your A scales starting with the first finger. That's uh, A flat and A. <coughs> and then also uh, B flat and B. No need to go any further than that, just for the moment. So we've got the G scales, A and um, B scales, two octaves, in first position. The first thing to do is to play them very slowly and when you are playing slowly I would suggest that um, it's an idea to uh, make the key note, the tonic note, twice as long as all the rest of the notes. So you're playing a long starting note twice as long as all the rest of the notes and what this does if you are playing separate bows, that is with no slurring, it will mean that the tonic notes are all whole bows and all the rest of the notes are half bows. And that means that you can practice in the top half of the bow, the middle half of the bow and doing nice, long, smooth whole bows as well. It means that you will have to practice in different parts of the bow. Everybody tends to have a favourite part of the bow to play in, a sort of default area, and this gets you out of that default area and makes you practice in all parts of the bow. So it will start off in G with a whole bow, then half bows, then a whole bow when you get to the top note, to the G again, and then half bows in the bottom half of the bow and so on, alternating the two. Okay, so that's the basic of getting the, the bowing uh, nicely smooth and in different parts of it. But I just want to focus for a moment back on this left hand because clearly uh, one important aspect of playing scales is the intonation. <clears throat> Make sure that your left hand shape is good, that it's not resting in any way like that on the violin, that it's curled over so that your fingers will drop nicely onto the strings. And when you make contact with the strings, it should be a nice clean drop and firm push down so that there's good contact between the finger, the string and onto the fingerboard without pulling the strings to either side. And also, hopefully, without touching 
the strings on either side as well. That's a good habit to get into because it will make it much more easy when we start doing double stopping uh, at a later date. Now to check the intonation you will need two things. First of all be able to sing uh, what you are playing. Uh, so I can't at the moment because my voice is quite hoarse <coughs> Uh, but it's a good idea just to sing the key note and maybe even la the scale so that you know what notes that you are going to be playing. <clears throat> but the second tip is that to stop and on certain notes and just check that they are in tune, which you can do against open strings. So if you use a fourth finger on this G string, check it against the open string. When you get up to the octave, that's the third finger here. And you can hear the violin ringing actually in the sound box when it's in tune. Check it against the, the open string. Uh, play both together. If they're nicely in tune, they'll sound great. If they're slightly out of tune and you're playing them together, they'll sound horrible. Uh, there are lots of um, places where you can check the tuning in that way. But there's one other that uh, often is missed of a way of checking. Is um, when you come back down the scale, just to check that you're still in tune, say with that first finger, uh, and we're sticking to the G major scale at the moment, first finger when you're coming up down and going up is on A. It's coming down. There's your A. Now, if you play the open string and that first finger is out of tune, the open string will sound out of tune. So, say... Sorry. There's the A. It's actually, I've gone really sharp means that that open string sounds a bit strange. I'll just do that again, that wasn't very helpful. So I'm going to just do one octave. And I'm going to play the A out of tune. And you should be able to hear that the G string sounds actually more out of tune than the A string because that tonic, that key note, should be ringing in your ears and completely accurate. So that's another way of getting, um, helping with the intonation, is just to check the open strings against the first finger. You can check the open strings against your fourth finger to make sure that they're the same, but also that first finger as well. It's very helpful. So, just nice and slow, uh, but once you've got that, that going, uh, if I'm playing quicker scales to try and get my fingers loosened and get the facility to be able to play quickly, um, I do like to drop that idea of the longer first note and just go up and down, straight up and down. Straight up and down, nice and clean, every single note exactly the same length, every single note in tune. And you can try different finger patterns. We'll go into this idea of different patterns later on. But uh, for example, two notes per bow, etc. All sorts of different combinations that you can use. But basically, nice slow scales to make sure that uh, the bowing is absolutely right, that the fingering is absolutely right, that it's clearly in tune, and so on. Take your time over it. G scales, A scales. Scales. Okay, now the other thing just before we finish is the uh, bow, which I have mentioned uh, in terms of making it nice and smooth and even, uh, but make sure you've got a nice grip here, nice and relaxed little finger, all it's doing is balancing the bow, first finger, all it's doing really is controlling the weight of the bow. <coughs> thumb should be flexible, able to move in and out. And when you are bowing, the basics are choose a spot to play on on the violin, stay on that spot, move the bow from one end to the other, don't move off that spot, keep the sound consistent, which means that you'll have to lighten the bow a little bit at this end when you play near the heel, and just let it rest on the violin as you go up to the tip. 
keep the bow parallel to the bridge and you make a lovely turn. So that all has to be absolutely right as well. Make sure it's right with your slow practice, uh, but also keep it right with the, the quick left hand finger practice because you could easily be going like mad with this left hand, but a nice slow bow here. So the weight needs to be controlled in just the same way and the position on the string needs to be controlled in just the same way as you were doing when you were practicing slow scales. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, move on in the next uh, session to playing in exactly the same way but in different positions on the violin. So we'll be covering um, third uh, position and so on, second, third, fourth position. Uh, just to get you going with that and then also in another video I want to talk about the merits of um, playing single string scales so that you're just moving up and down the violin but we'll cover that later. Okay so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, session uh, if you have please subscribe to my channel and uh, with your practice good luck.